Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Computer Witness Day, we're gonna talk about augmented reality, basically a bigger brother of virtual reality. So what the heck we are talking about? We are talking about a technology that allows us to merge real world plus the virtual world. You have to understand it this way. In virtual reality, everything is removed from your uh, you know surroundings. Basically, you wear headphones that remove background sound. You wear a headset that block out normal view. So reality is you are isolated when you're talking about VR. Sometimes they will put you in a chair or a harness. Basically, they want to isolate you as much as possible and put you inside a virtual world. This is opposite of that. So real world is still there. It's real. And you're going to place your virtual objects virtual reality on top of some things so basically you don't need to isolate yourself you don't need a dark room you don't need a, a trajectory system or something uh, basically a motion system or something like that you don't need to be isolated and the virtual ad reality adapts to you now you want the best example of that uh, i would urge you to watch iron man one most amazing movie ever made uh, basically you can see that when iron man wears the helmet for the first time you can see one very awesome example he just glances he just glances at uh, his audi uh, series basically 2010 audi r8 and jarvis pulls up the whole detail and creates a pamphlet on top of it it's like this is the car now here's the interesting part uh, that pamphlet does not move when he moves his head back so that's the whole point of uh, augmented reality that augmented reality because the car did not move physically so Jarvis is like no that data should remain there so if I go glance back that data is there if I don't no it's like on the periphery so that's the whole thing reality will remain real and your virtual reality will add on top of it it won't be like you know okay no you are moved you are isolated no it's just like no it's real like let's say I put a object here on this table it will remain on this table it will not move around or something like that so that's the whole thing now how the heck this technology works well inherently it needs a way to project over real world that's all it means so i have a very low end version of this on my car what does that mean that simply means i have a heads up display uh, which uh, basically reads the odp data and it projects all the data on the glass now i'm looking at the road i'm seeing the uh, through the road and that uh, glass is acting as a two-way mirror for me and i'm also seeing my engine rpm my speed my fuel and all that jazz directly through uh, on the same road basically it literally looks like that number is floating in the mid-air because of the projection system so you have to do that same thing basically your eyes are the main input and you have to have a way to add basically remove uh, this is very critical aspect you have to add you cannot just remove a uh, real world that's the difference between virtual reality and augmented reality. augmented reality cannot remove the reality so you cannot be like okay block your eyes and give data from screen it has some way of uh, basically adding the real world in so you have two options you can go either uh, translucent or opaque now opaque simply means uh, there is no direct communication but there is a camera to compensate for that for example pokemon go you are looking through a mobile phone but here's the mobile is not trans uh, basically transparent or translucent you cannot see through it but camera is creating an illusion of that so that will what we classify as opaque uh, augmented reality now this opaque augmented reality can be done with tablet tablets whatever have you uh, but if you need translucent one you can start like the oldest example i could find that was like uh, tried to be popular was google glass or uh, you know super expensive version i could think of is like a f-35 fighter jet helmet which is like one of them is like four hundred thousand uh, dollar and the reality was like they accidentally realized how awesome this could be because that plane the plane itself has multiple infrared camera 24 uh, like placed all around the view it's like it has a 360 degree view of everything around it so reality is this was built for missile detection system but they are like dude the data is there why not we project that data to the pilot so benefit of this imagine this way this is a fighter jet it's flying much higher than a commercial uh, plane so let's say it goes to like 60,000 feet and there is a commercial plane below it uh, but how the heck the pilot will see that in olden days the only option was pilot has to tilt the planes like you know tilt it and look it sideways uh, that's okay but you can understand that if you are talking about radar's uh, signature and all that you really don't want to tilt your plane so what this helmet allows to do because all the data is being fed back into the system and this is translucent it's basically pilot all has to do move his head down computer is going to detect the head is moved down and it's like okay see through the thing how the heck it's seeing through because there are cameras same way your mobile phone and it in this case it has an infrared system so it can like literally day and night vision directly the pilot does not have to like tilt his plane or something like that it's just like literally has an x-ray vision so that's the two core ways of doing it basically you have opaque objects or you can have translate one and this is uh, because it's not like a running a video play or something like that there must be feedback loop for the virtual world this is critical uh, importance uh, in uh, case of basically your mobile phone the camera is acting as primary input uh, the gyroscope the accelerometer the compass all these are feeding extra data to help out your virtual world because virtual world has to know about the real world they are not isolated from each other 
So let's understand the basic level of it. The thing that you may have already used or may use it regularly without even thinking about it is basically our normal smartphone are good enough at this point in time. There are two primary reasons for that. First, all smartphones have cameras and most of them are really good at this point in time and accelerometers which allows them to camera uh, basically your mobile phone to know whether you are tilted upwards, backwards, forwards, right? Like it knows the orientation also and it has a very fast processor like imagine it this way the computer processor i have in my 2009 uh, computer i have literally the similar amount of teraflops in my pocket so fundamentally our processors are fast enough now world awareness and object detection now how it's done that depends on the game engine that depends on the algorithm or something like that uh, so it uses the camera as a primary input and figures it out. The first thing it's going to figure out where's the horizon, which is like what is top, what is down. Thankfully, there are sensors like a gyroscope uh, or accelerometer. Those will give you like, okay, this is the level. Then using the camera, it will do object tracking. So it's like, okay, this looks like a floor. It, uh, gravity sensor is also gravity sensor. I'm saying. Accelerometer is also telling that that's the floor. And it's like, okay, that's how it draws the first thing. And then using object tracking, it is like, if you move your mobile phone, it, it knows something like I have moved this much in real world. So object detection and world awareness allows uh, this applications to work. Like for example, uh, Google has a like a Google Lens option where you can literally scan a real world thing in uh, real world time and it's gonna translate on top of it. So it's basically virtually overlaying it. So you can be in Russia and you can like literally scan a sign like while uh, in real time, it's all this is happening in real time and it's gonna scan the thing. It's gonna like, okay, it's gonna call up the main server. And it's like, okay, bro, translate it. It's gonna translate it and ta-da, you're gonna have a real world output of that. So. These are real things and even a more popular use of that, the most popular use I can even think of right now is uh, basically virtual reality uh, things that are added on top of uh, normal things like uh, AR in Instagram. Instagram is going YOLO on it and like uh, all the flower crowns and things of that nature, they are becoming very popular and you have to understand they became very good like in early days it was like meaningless, it was, like barely you know holding on top to something. Now it can actually scan your head and be like okay tries to like if you move your head too much it's like oh it will snap in or out but uh, right now it's pretty damn good so you can have some, from games to translator app like basic level almost every human can achieve at this point in time. Now let's first come to pro level. Now this is a bit different compared to every other technology. Most technologies try to be as cheap as possible nowadays, but that was not always the uh, way of doing things. Older ways that of doing things was like you create a technology for professional people. After a while, it comes down in price, and then you uh, sell it to normal public. But uh, Microsoft is investing in AR technology, a lot of money. I mean, like GG amount of money, and uh, they are changing their architecture to old system rather than trying to uh, make a very cheap device they are going for as expensive as possible uh, by like still within being reasonable but they are aiming for professional now microsoft hello lens one was totally a prototype it was like okay uh, give this device to people and let's see what they can figure out so they were not overselling it it's like you know this is the most amazing thing no flat or not that was the whole idea was that figure it out like this is a tool figure it out what you want to do it figure like give us actual real world feedback so that was hololens one now hololens two is a three thousand five hundred dollar price that's damn expensive that like uh, double the virtual reality headset cost so it's a very expensive equipment but primary reason for that is it has YOLO amounts of sensor. It is ludicrously packed with sensors. And many of the sensors in this puppy, it's literally made by Microsoft. There was no sensor company that was like, okay, you want to do hand tracking with a depth sensor camera? No, there is no camera for doing that. So they had to invent it. Like uh, we have depth camera in mobile, mobile phone, but it was not good enough where you can do like this. Like heck, even virtual reality headset, which is built for that right now, they cannot do that. And Microsoft has been doing that from 2019 because they in-house development is so damn high. So they built and again that's the whole reason this is so expensive uh, so they can scan your hand real time and do every single motion and it also creates a uh, basically projected skeleton mesh here so if you uh, camera creates a data point that's like dude that does not right like basically your, pink, your pinky is going this word it's like it knows that for a fact that uh, human skeleton cannot move like that so it will discard that data and that way it can do real time human hand tracking with surprisingly high accuracy which allows them to quote unquote interact with the hologram and that's happening using camera. You don't have to have a hand grip or something like that, just using camera. So damn awesome in terms of that. And uh, there is another fact because they are projecting something. Projecting something directly into your eyes uh, requires you to have a very wide field of view, which is expensive itself. They figured it out. And uh, another aspect is it has to, uh, a way of adjusting itself because you don't move like this all the time. Oh, I have to move left or right to see left or right. Your eyes moves. So this has a camera directly looking towards your eyes, both of the eyes, and it's creating a depth 
the map based on that like where the heck you are actually looking based on that feedback it's correcting the vision and you are going to get awesome outcomes so the first thing you will do if you can ever afford it uh, you put it on there will be a demo it's like you know hummingbird demo and the, that demo will help ask you to like move your hand here 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 based on all the cameras this puppy has it will calibrate itself so it will be perfectly uh, aligned for you like this is as close to futuristic technology as you can expect it's just bigger than iron man helmet but it has the technology of iron man helmet in principle except the processing power it has everything needed so it has on head processing so they knew for a fact that tethering will simply not work so from day one they were designing it such a way that they're gonna have a like back mounted unit now why back mounted why not everything front mounted front mounting will reduce the cost but side effect would be it would be very uncomfortable to wear and the amount of r d they put into just the damn comfort department of this it's very uh, impressive so to say like flat out i would urge you to watch the video where they are discussing like how much effort it took them to just build the damn physical design not anything uh, like you know technology wise just fit and finish of the device just so people can wear this without tiring them because they were like, aiming for doctors so it is damn impressive so on head processing is separated out the benefit of that your center of mass is directly inside your head so it's not here it's not like you know pulling down it's not back pulling upwards it's basically inside so it looks like floating again you will feel a bit of stress but because the stress is distributed well enough it will not hurt you so fundamentally quite amazing technology and cloud link is also there because they are aiming for doctors and the main use for doctors are like uh, many times we do nowadays what we call keyhole surgery basically small insertion and your robot, uh, robotic arm is going to go inside and doctor is going to do their thing because we are human body we do not like to be like open it up like you know remove the gpu remove the kidney and all that jazz we don't like to do that so uh, keyhole surgery are very uh, you know desirable options consequence of that how the heck a doctor is gonna see doctor does not have x-ray vision for that reason uh, many times right now when doctors are doing they could have ultrasound they could have x-ray or they could have some uh, sort of system to give feedback real-time feedback on monitors and now here's the that's how it's working it's like they're looking on a monitor and they are doing it like here again they have to do it otherwise there is no other option but hollow lens is like what if you don't have to do that? what if you literally are looking at the thing where you are moving your things around and hollow lens is uh, correcting your vision and another benefit of that it does not have to do real world everything like that you just have to show the video feed while your hand is like this so that would be helpful and because it has eye tracking uh, generally doctors have like two three uh, data points when they are working on so let's say ultrasound and x-ray they don't just have to look sideways they do not have to do like this they have to just look sideways camera is going to detect a to the uh, eye is glazing to some else it's gonna highlight that area and if i focuses on that it's like okay then move the ultrasound here that's the whole aim of this puppy this is made for and they are dealing with uh, philips to make this technology into a reality philips is a very huge corporation when it comes to medical departments and in uh, computer aided manufacturing department everything let's let's say think of this way. Uh, there is a plane there is a jumbo jet it gets grounded for some reason some technical fault now computers on jumbo jets are advanced enough there is more than enough sensor in the jet engine is like dude sensor number 12 uh, is showing that the valve number 15 is broken now here's the deal who the heck knows what is valve number 15 now a boeing engineer would know but likelihood of an actual boeing engineer being there in that airport at that point in time is very zero but right now what hololens will allow to do a normal generic engineer is just going to put the hololens look at the engine and the boeing uh, uh, associates they're going to call them up like dude go there and uh, while the hologram is projecting on top of the real world so they're going to oh open these these bolts and remove this thing so uh, engineering industrial department architects these sort of people uh, that's why the price is not too ludicrous for what they are offering their aim are like for doctors and not to mention doctors not supposed to buy this this will be a, a medical uh, instrument same way like ultrasounds and x-ray and mri machine so that's why microsoft is aiming a, on a different kind of like they want to lay down the technology they want to figure everything out help the professionals and uh, industrial workers all those that then they will figure out how to uh, you know mass market it so surprisingly unique approach so to say now what you can expect in the future now this te if technology right now needs miniaturization like it looks cool to have a, like a giant helmet uh, but it's just that it looks cool it's very uh, non-desirable so to say so it has to this puppy has to be miniaturized a lot and it has to be cheaper a lot those, those things are uh, very serious requirement however there is a lot of potential here and given the fact that uh, microsoft is focusing on real world use rather than like you know uh, gaming factors or things of that nature and the fact that medical people who are already using they are like dude this is critical like as in like school stu uh, school students like medical college students are already using this so it's a real thing so a lot of real world potential from medical industry to industrial industry so this is a technology i can easily see in future a lot of people utilizing this it's not something like you know as 
a gimmick it, it will fade over i am seeing lot of potential here now again i do not know whether it will pan out or not but if i have to put my money down there is a very good chance by 2025 you're going to see lot of industrial people doctors and all that just utilizing us so this was my presentation on augmented reality i hope you liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friends that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press this like press this twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching